Hello, hello everyone and welcome to the first in my Growing Leaders series. <clears throat> um, I'm really excited about the session. It is called How to Have a Difficult Conversation. So this is a topic that comes up a lot, uh, either in my one-to-one -one coaching or in my group coaching sessions. Um, but before I dive in, let me just introduce myself for uh, people who are new to my world. So my name is Emily Petty. I am a coach, I'm a trainer, I'm a facilitator. Um, I am passionate about helping you and your team to rise up and lead your way, to love work, to find fulfillment in work, to par um, carve out a career roadmap that is fulfilling and impactful and to overcome some of the blocks and the barriers that you might face um, at work and um, in your teams and in your leadership. And um, I'm speaking today as part in, in the Lead Your Way Facebook community. You might be watching um, on YouTube or another forum. So wherever you are, whether you're watching live or uh, on a recording or on re replay, hello. If you are watching in a facility where you can comment, please do comment um, uh, and share your thoughts and your questions because I love to hear feedback from everybody. So how to have a difficult conversation. So often we find difficult conversation or conversations where something difficult needs to be said, um, maybe some challenging feedback. Um, we find it hard, we find it difficult because we fear um, that we might not be liked. We don't want to hurt or upset the other person. Um, uh, we, we don't want to kind of rock the boat. And often maybe we don't even know quite what to say to deliver that feedback in a really effective and impactful way. And often we mistake being nice for the sake of being nice because we don't want to hurt people or um, being liked um, as kindness. And actually it's not necessarily always kind to not say the thing that needs to be said. Uh, so I highly recommend a book called Radical Candor by Kim Scott and she has four elements in a quadrant and, and she advocates radical candor, which is our ability to, uh, with trust and with respect um, and with clarity, to have these difficult conversations. And the opposite of that is ruinous empathy, which is when we think that we are being kind and loving uh, by not saying anything and letting this situation maybe rumble on and not facing into those challenging conversations. Um, and actually a starting point to think about actually, do I need to exercise radical candor would be to think actually, what is the impact for this person if I don't address or challenge this situation? So it might be that someone is, you know, not performing at a level that's required for their job or they're making repeated mistakes that if you don't tell them that they're making the mistake, they'll never know. And then maybe it gets to a critical point where actually you have to tell them. And by that point, it's become quite a major issue and everything sort of escalates. So they haven't had a chance to um, improve or to change or correct their course of, of action. So by not speaking, you're not telling that person um, the truth and not enabling them to grow and to learn. And as leaders, if you manage other people, one of your roles is to help people to grow. And that's where feedback and having these challenging conversations comes in because they, however awkward they feel, they become a learning point. So I've got four points to share with you today about how to have a difficult conversation. Um, so the first is it's probably more about you. <laughs> so look inwards first. I think often we think, oh gosh, it's so difficult. How am I gonna have this conversation? What am I gonna say? Um, uh, what are they gonna think of me? Um, and uh, there are probably a lot of, sorry, dog interrupting, um, assumptions that you're making. And those might be based on maybe how someone has delivered feedback or had a difficult conversation with you and managed it badly. So you might have had past experiences that has had a negative impact on you. 
Um, so the first question, which is always the question that I ask, uh, so if you've been following me for a while, you'll be familiar with this question. Um, what are you assuming about having this conversation? Um, what are your assumptions that you are bringing into the conversation that make you believe that it's a difficult conversation or that it's not going to go well or that you won't be liked or, or whatever that is? So uh, it might bring up those things about being liked, not being liked, etc. And then ask what else? So try to delve a little bit deeper. Um, so it might be that uh, you don't have a particularly good relationship with this individual, for example, or um, uh, you've given negative feedback to them in the past and they took it badly. Um, and then anchor into what are you most assuming? What's that core assumption that's stopping you from having this difficult conversation? So one of the biggest things that we do is delay. We think, oh, I'll wait till next week or now now isn't the right time. I'll wait till the next week. But then the impact of delaying, as I said, is, is it could mean the behaviour continues or it becomes sort of untimely and therefore that not that helpful and harder to say, well, do you remember three weeks ago when this happened? And then challenge that assumption is that true and can you create a more liberating true assumption that could help you to step into that conversation with more confidence and more authority and on that if you are the person whose role it is to have a difficult conversation step into your authority so think about your job title your job description and um, why you are here um, having that difficult conversation if, if it is a, um, a conversation that's related to the fact that you're their manager, for example. Um, uh, if you're having a difficult conversation with a peer, um, maybe a fellow um, manager across the organisation, um, just have a think about your role, um, the impact you're having in the organisation and how important um, your role is for the whole organisation and just sort of anchor in, into that and your identity in your role. And the second point is around connection and relationship. So having these difficult conversations is always, always easier when you know the person, when you understand them, when you um, you know know that they've got like a little dog at their feet if they're online, um, and the names of their children, where they live, etc. So just check in. Do you have a good relationship with that person? Um, if you don't and you need to have the difficult conversation quickly, obviously um, have a think about how you could build rapport and connection within that conversation. So how can you um, connect with them even very, very quickly, whether that's through your body language, through um, asking open questions, through encouraging them to speak first, listening for the cues, listening for the words that help you to understand them better. You can do a bit of research, you can understand what's going on for them in their um, life and in their work, what pressures are they facing, you know, what might be causing them to um, behave in this way or um, take this action that maybe you want to have a challenging conversation about. So think about getting to know that person. And one of the tools that you can do in preparation for the difficult conversation is to sit um, metaphorically on the other side of the table. So um, take a different perceptual position. So literally imagine um, you're in a meeting room and you're sitting on one side, they're sitting on another, and you take the seat um, up on the other side of the table and look back at yourself. What are they thinking? Um, what's going on for them that might um, impact um, the conversation? How are they preparing for the meeting? What might their viewpoint, at thoughts, feelings be? So take some time to really understand their viewpoints. You can then take a third position, which is a neutral position where you observe the conversation uh, from a third point, um, a third person, as it were, uh, looking at the two of you having a conversation. What would that third objective person say about what's going on between the two of you? So taking that kind of helicopter view and stepping back um, is really helpful. So often when it's a difficult conversation, we've taken something personally, perhaps, and actually this exercise helps you to remove yourself a little bit from um, the detail. They've hurt me, they've upset me, uh, this has had a big impact on my life, on my team, um, I feel very uncomfortable. Um, it helps you to sort of step beyond that. Then the one, two, three, Oh, yes. The third point is to frame the feedback. So to frame the conversation. So plan what you're going to say. 
Um, I would also encourage you, as I've said, to listen to the person first before you say what you have to say. So give them the opportunity to speak first. And it's a three or four point uh, frame. So uh, you state what has happened. So um, describe the action, describe the facts. So if you or when you or when this happened. So make sure you're clearly stating the context for um, what you want to say. And then you might say that means or that results in um, and you can talk about the impact of that. And that could be on your feelings or on someone else's feelings. It could be an impact on workload. It could be an impact on results. But very clearly state what the impact of what they're doing is on the organisation, etc. But in that point, think about their priorities. So you want to frame that impact like that upset me. I feel really upset. I feel really hurt. And um, you want to frame that based on actually what their needs and wants are, because they're more likely to understand it from their perspective than from your perspective. And then you clearly state how you would like them to change. I would like you to um, really think about a very clear action that they can tangibly understand. So being vague here isn't at all helpful. So very clearly state what you would like them to do um, and then talk about the benefits. So, so that, so that we can work together better, so that we can achieve our results, so that um, um, our, our, our teams can um, have less work on or, you know, whatever the impact that you want to have um, really end with that and again, frame that impact that benefit as a benefit for them so that's where that work where we've understood who they are what matters most to them what are their objectives and priorities if you frame that as a benefit for them they're much more likely to go oh yeah that is a really good point thank you so much for being so clear about that so that's that framework so if you you describe the situation the action and the facts you can talk um uh, and then move into that means so that means the um uh, hit the impact on you if it's about uh, an emotional thing um uh, the impact on others the impact on your work etc um uh, and the, the or you could say which results in then i would like you to so what action you'd like them to take so that um therefore the benefits to them and to others around them really focusing on what matters most <clears throat> to that person <clears throat> and then the final point is uh, about your state managing your state so thinking about how you show up so confidently entering the room so thinking about standing up thinking about doing breathing so you could slow your breathing down before you have the meeting and be very cognizant and aware of your breathing within the conversation and um, notice your body change so if perhaps you feel that nervousness just slow your body down you can slow the conversation down you're in control of the speed of the conversation and you can control that by slowing your voice down you can take a sip of water. You can hold a pause. So pauses are really powerful because actually in a difficult conversation, you might be saying something that this person has not heard before. And we assume that because we've played it over in our mind, it will go from the kind of the head to the heart very quickly. But actually by pausing, you're allowing time for that person to process the information. Um, also by pausing after they speak allows them to process what they've just said, but it also allows you to process what they've said. So to really slow the conversation down is a very powerful technique when having difficult conversations. You don't need to justify yourself or to respond. So we get into a trap of saying the the feedback statements that I've just shared, the assertiveness statements that I've just shared, and they say, oh, but this and that. Um, uh, you don't actually need to say anything, just listen to what that person says. Um, and then you can say, well, thank you for sharing that, and then report, uh, repeat the, I would like you to, so that. Um, and you can just repeat that same message, because actually coming into a difficult conversation with one key message, is the most powerful thing. Otherwise, you're going to get driven down. They'll take you, you know, if they're used to manipulating people, for example, they might be um, very adept subconsciously at taking people down all sorts of different routes. So you just repeat the same thing again. 
and always listen first. So take the opportunity to listen to them because that means you can mirror their language um, uh, and you can look out for actually what they want and what matters most. Sometimes that isn't clear. As I say, people can go down all sorts of different routes uh, without really knowing where they're going or why they're going where they're going. So those are my four top tips. So first, it's probably more about you. Check your assumptions. What are you assuming and what are you assuming most? Is it true? And what's the liberating assumption that could just turn that around to help manage your thinking? Um, get into the step into their shoes, change your perspectives, sit on their side of the boardroom table. What's going on for them? What matters most for them? Frame your feedback. So think about that feedback statement. If you, that means, I would like you to so that and then top tips thinking about managing your state so your breathing your body language um, uh, pausing not jumping in to respond slowing things down and listening first so that's it those are my top tips on how to have a difficult conversation if you are facing into a difficult conversation, I offer a 60 minute power hour coaching session for just £90, which is an opportunity for you to um, delve into one specific thing that you are facing into. So that could be a difficult conversation uh, and I can work with you to help you to particularly work on that liberating assumption to help you understand, you know, what's what's really stopping you from having that difficult conversation and to really identify a path forward that is right for you in your context um, for that conversation. So if you're interested in having a power hour for just £90, please drop me a line and um, I'd love to work with you. Other than that, I'm recording this on uh, the Friday the 28th of April. Uh, on the 5th of May, I am starting a new programme called Live life with yourself and that really is that whole first piece of this conversation is uh, what is holding you back from having a difficult con conversation from stepping up in your career from um whatever it is you want to achieve in your life what is stopping you and chances are there's probably some internal work some inner work that needs to be done first so this is four weeks where you can um Find your inner critic, notice what your inner critic is saying, find your values and your strengths um, and um, uncover really the, the real you, the leader within <clears throat> um, so that you can step forward and step out and step into whoever you want to be or wherever you want to get to, um, not what's um, prescribed by what you think the next step is because that's what you should do, um, but really starting with what matters most for you working on your strengths and your values um so that's how i, I start um all my work with my clients because that is really the foundation from which we can um lead others we can grow in our career um we can start a new business whatever whatever matters most for you um this is the starting point so i'm um offering that at the moment for just 111 pounds for a four week program you get four 90 minute sessions with me and an opportunity to um be in a whatsapp group for the whole month and i will be jumping in there every day with some reflections and thoughts there's an opportunity for you to jump in um share how you're doing um so i can offer you feedback um ask coaching questions so basically you've got me in your pocket for a whole month plus those four 90 minute sessions all for just 111 pounds if you're interested in joining um see the links below or above or wherever uh, in my bio uh, and um i'd love to get started um to help you to live life with yourself so i hope you have a lovely weekend and look forward to seeing you next week for the second episode in the growing leaders series